Stella Crowhurst and Christian Polstrup. Hi, Stella. Hi, Christian. They're coming from MasterCard, uh, where Stella is uh, Vice President of Product Management and Christian is Technical Lead uh, Product Manager. And I'm going to just let you take it away so that you have all the time. Cool. Right. So, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be uh, back uh, uh, at uh, this uh, conference. Uh, I, I took part uh, um, uh, back in, in uh, 2018 and uh, uh, I was working for a different company and uh, I was uh, presenting uh, um, the work that we had done uh, on our uh, developer portal at the time. And um, um, one of the features uh, that we were presenting back in the days was actually a developer uh, chatbot, uh, which my team had uh, worked on and put together. Um, and uh, we were... Um, uh, we wanted to, to launch it at, at some point, um, mainly focused on providing developers with uh, um, support to troubleshooting, I don't know, answers to uh, frequently asked questions. Um, and at the time, um, you know, what one of the things that uh, uh, my team, uh, my technical writing team had uh, to do was really design uh, all the conversation flows, thinking about uh, uh, the, the user intents, uh, what they were going to ask uh, and what was the appropriate uh, uh, answer. Uh, and the technology was uh, in its very early day. Um, and it, it was really uh, a time consuming work uh, from, from a tech writers to put together um, all of the questions and answers. So we also organized uh, like a sort of doc docathon with uh, uh, all our engineers hacking uh, the, the, the chatbot, asking loads of questions uh, and, and then um, making sure that we had uh, the, the right uh, answers. Um, eventually, we, we didn't launch uh, the, the uh, prototype. Uh, I think uh, back in the days, uh, one of the big questions that, that was coming up was, uh, would the developers even use a chatbot? Uh, uh, and, and I think uh, um, that the answer was was definitely no at, at the time. There was a lot of um, people were really very skeptical about uh, um, especially developers about uh, chatbots. And um, I think the, the preference uh, back in the days uh, was really uh, to use our community, which was an open forum uh, where developers, you know, could talk to each other and to help and support each other. You know? So we, we completely uh, misunderstood uh, the, the developer persona on that uh, occasion. You know? Now, uh, six years uh, after, um, I think the, the uh, technology has uh, uh, changed a lot, uh, the, the landscape of, of chatbots uh, and conversational uh, AI has significantly evolved. Uh, um, modern LLMs have uh, uh, a much deeper understanding of natural language, uh, and uh, they, they can provide more accurate content uh, aware and nuanced uh, responses um, compared to uh, the ones uh, that, that uh, uh, they, they were providing in, in 2018, uh, which were very much rule-based. And, um, and also creating chatbots uh, uh, can, can be definitely simpler. Um, in terms uh, of uh, you know the initial setup uh, because uh, the the model and understa understanding of uh, of the language comes really uh, out of uh, of the box and developers uh, can focus on the refining the interactions rather than building them from scratch um and uh, there's also uh, the fact that modern LLMs benefit from ongoing, uh, ongoing training uh, on the diverse uh, data sets. 
uh, and they can improve their capabilities over time uh, um, and that they are more scalable. The, the one that we were using back in uh, 2018 um, was uh, um, very specific of, of one platform and now uh, they are more platform uh, agnostic. So uh, things have, have changed uh, a lot. Now, just a second, uh, technical issues with my presentation. Oops. No, I need to stop sharing, sorry, and share again. Let me... Okay, I'm back. Okay, sorry. Um, so, um, what uh, uh, we're, we're going to talk about uh, uh, today is uh, how we can use uh, uh, AI uh, to deal with complex uh, API documentation. Uh, I've been working for over uh, 10 years for very large enterprises, and uh, uh, one of the, the things that, that I've learned is that uh, large enterprises uh, have uh, very complex documentation that in many uh, cases, and as well as APIs, that um, in many cases have been built up uh, throughout uh, the years. Uh, this makes it very difficult also for, for a tech writer, product team, and even uh, UX teams to build uh, a smooth uh, uh, integration experience. And then on the other side, you also have a lot of pressure from a business perspective to shorten the integration uh, uh, part of, of uh, the customer journey as much as possible, because the shorter that journey, the quicker the time to revenue, you know. Um, and and uh, this seems uh, quite uh, obvious, but uh, um, the, the, the biggest uh, problem for large enterprises is that you can't go and rewrite all of your documentation uh, in order to make it uh, um, accessible and um, easily understandable and consumable uh, by, uh, by, by your customers. In most cases, also because the APIs themselves are extremely complex uh, and you might have in a, even a lot of them. And, and that is where um, AI can come in and help uh, improve that uh, that journey. I'll leave it to Christian. Yeah, thank you, Stella. And hi, all. I'm uh, I'm Christian, uh, the lead product manager on this product. And I'll tell you about how we solve this problem, but also some of the key takeaways. And actually, I think some some takeaways um, that are not really discussed um, um, that that much. So hopefully, something novel here. All right, so the solution for us was to deploy an LLM powered assistant on our documentation side. Um, so this gives integrators the experience of sort of like chatting with the docs. All right, you can essentially have a conversation with the assistant, uh, which you can sort of see on the right. Uh, there's an example where you can ask natural questions and you're able to, to get answers back. I think many of you have seen this before. Um, what is used here is called a retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Uh, and there are plenty of, of really good resources out there on how to build systems like this. So I won't spend too much time on that. Instead, I'll try and take uh, like fo focus on some of the learnings. Um, so some of the the advantages of like a, a RAG system um, is that um, we can ground the assistant in, in the documentation, which significantly reduces the risk of hallucinations, um, which is like the assistant saying something that's true and also allows us to constrain the scope of the conversation. So we only discuss topics that are relevant to our business, right? Uh, and the, the assistant uh, then becomes generally useful in, in three ways. Uh, right? you, you can help with usage and, and understanding, like explain concepts, make suggestions, et cetera. It can provide code examples specific to the customer's context. So typically we say a picture is worth a thousand words, but I think that's absolutely also true of working code. 
And the third big three uh, theme is uh, troubleshooting, where like the customer can describe the problem and get help in real time. Like sometimes it's very difficult to like describe like. Uh, figure out what's causing the problem. You, you, you might be difficult to figure out where to look in the documentation, but then actually just speaking with the with the uh, assistant, uh, you might be able to to figure out what's causing the problem. Um, so, there have been studies conducted on the benefits of these systems, um, and actually on on the right you see uh, one of the such studies done by McKinsey, and their findings generally match our experience as well. So essentially, integrators um, integrations can be done way faster by giving our customers access to generative AI tooling. So this is part due to the documentation becoming easy to consume. Uh, it's more relevant to the specific uh, situation, uh, and also uh, because of how how much better it is to troubleshoot issues. Um, so what this really does is that we are putting the customer in the driving seat. Right? So instead of us trying to predict how uh, someone might want to consume our documentation, um, we're essentially letting the customer uh, lead the conversation. Right? They ask the questions and we provide the answer. Right? So they can chart their own path through the documentation. They can learn at their own pace. And all of the examples are specific to the customer's use case, which is really powerful. Cool. So now we've touched on how we solve the problem. Uh, why we think it's a good solution. Um, let's talk about some of the learnings. Um, and and uh, like I said, in, in particular, some of the things that we think are, are quite novel. Um, so the first major takeaway is uh, the importance of efficacy, right? So the usefulness of the system. And uh, we think that this uh, is so important, it overshadows everything else. Um, it, right? So to try and drive this home, imagine this example. Take two AI-powered assistants. They're identical in every way in terms of the features. They have the same UI, the same experience. Right? So you, you'd kind of say that they're identical on, on the surface, at least. Uh, however, like system A is quite good. It answers most questions relatively well, but can often make like small mistakes. Um, it generally gets the gist of the answer correct, though. Right? So let's say it has a factual correctness of 80%. System B is a bit better. Um, it gets most answers correct, and it doesn't make the same kind of small mistakes as system A. So let's say it has a factual correctness of 98%. Right? So there's a difference of only 18% between these systems, uh, which might seem small on surface, but in reality, it is massive. System A uh, makes frequent mistakes, um, and thus everything needs to be manually fact-checked. It cannot be trusted. Um, and also because it's actually relative, relatively competent and convincing, it's not easy to figure out what it gets wrong and what it gets right. Um, so really, this means that the customer doesn't really save that much time using the system. And thus, it is actually like borderline useless. System B, on the other hand, is different because you can trust it. Um, of course, you can't blindly rely on the answer. You still need to verify. Uh, but due to the high level of correctness, uh, you can increasingly like rely on the system to be generally helpful, and thus can save you a lot of time. Right? So system B actually has the potential to revolutionize your business. Um, so uh, improving the importance is is so uh, so massive, um, and um, Essentially, it, it comes down to the non-functional requirements. Right? You need to be very clear on what's good enough for your use case. So uh, a couple of suggestions here. Um, measure performance of your system by having a set of test cases that cover a representative set of use cases. This is super important. And then measure retrieval performance separate from generation performance, so you know which aspect of the system needs improvement. Um, you'll then need to iterate on the system, like improve it in some of these dimensions and measure again. This is the only way that you know that you're actually making progress and you know whether the system is good enough uh, for, for your use case. So um, expect to approach this iteratively, like experiment and measure. Um, it is very, very difficult, if not impossible, to actually predict real world performance. Um, yeah. 
So another uh, takeaway is um, to do with the, the actual documentation. Um, so because the assistant has access to our documentation, it now also becomes a consumer of our documentation. And this changes up a few things, right? Um, the better we can make the documentation for the assistant, the better it's able to actually help our customers. So a, a few takeaways, right? Be explicit and ambiguous. Um, detail and precision. Um, so this means that the assistant has lower risk of hallucination. Um, generally, it's important that things are self-contained. The assistant does not read from cover to cover. It looks at different sections and everything related to that section needs to be included. So they need to be uh, like self-sufficient and self-contained. You need to be able to consume sections independently. So that means that, like don't have a section up front or like a page with prerequisites or uh, abbreviations. You need to um, like, um, uh, sprinkle that throughout the documentation, so it is, it is, um, it is uh, close to the the section that the the AI is looking at. Um, the final thing is like diagrams and images um, can be problematic. Of course, we have multimodal models today, but generally they are pro prohibitive in terms of latency and cost, and the, the precision is just not there. So it's very important to also actually describe diagrams and images in text and particular focus on any conclusions. Um, yeah. So um, something very cool that comes out of using a RAG system is the fact that we have to embed our documentation um, and that really means turning it into a set of numbers. Uh, now, this is quite powerful because it actually allows us to visualize our documentation. So we can now look at, uh, like, this is a 3D presentation of that documentation, and we could say, uh, these uh, clusters uh, seem to be disjointed. Is there something here we need to be aware of? Um, like, is the uneven distribution reflective on the fact that we lack focus in a particular area? Like, what about satellite clusters? Does that mean that we're unfocused? Uh, do we need to actually uh, sort of link them to the, the, like the, the, the main documentation? Is something off here, right? So it gives us a whole new dimension, pun intended, um, that we can explore. And it, it'll sort of give us hypotheses as to what, what are the areas we can improve. Uh, let's do that next slide, Stella. Yeah. The other uh, new aspect is that um, the agent, the assistant, is consuming our documentation, uh, which allows us to actually measure what parts of the documentation are being consumed, how often, right? So we actually get analytics um, about the frequency of, uh, of usage, which we can map into, for instance, a heat map here. So we can directly see that, for instance, our prerequisites, are being used a lot, uh, maybe also the, the sample request. Right? So this might indicate that these are extremely useful and thus we should have more of them. Um, so we can, we can directly monitor uh, like the, the, the usage. Uh, the other aspect is that the assistance uh, responses are evaluated by humans, which now indirectly actually um, lets us evaluate the, the documentation itself in real time. So we can get real-time feedback on the documentation. And when we improve something, we can see if that actually improves the AI's responses as well. Um, cool. So um, what are some of the key takeaways? So firstly, we believe that AI assistants are incredibly powerful and can be absolute game changers for your customers. Um, they can provide a new layer on top of your documentation that allows customers to engage in, in ways that are tailored to their needs. Um, so we would absolutely recommend this to, to uh, anyone else. However, the usefulness of the system, the efficacy is so paramount and it is incredibly important to get this right. Um, so um, so you, that you can rely on the output. Uh, so determine what is good enough for your use case and then expect to iterate until you get there. Um, the other takeaway is that like the assistant actually now starts consuming your documentation. And so that might prompt you to reevaluate your, your documentation structure and the content to maximize the assistant's usefulness. Uh, there's gonna be a few more talks on this actually uh, later today. And the final, finally, um, you now have access to new analytical data um, that is provided by the assistant. And this can further 
um, optimize, used to optimize your documentation. And something that we've not previously had access to, uh, which can be leveraged to great effect. That was it. Thank you. Stella, Christian, thank you very much.